Tonight, part one, money, power, and Wall Street. The clouds are still hanging over the global economy, and they're still filled with risk. Inside the epic story of the global financial crisis. Here we are three years plus after, and very little has changed. Where we are now. Wall Street got bailed out, and Main Street didn't and how we got here. Let's put together a portfolio of credit risk. Other banks were taking these ideas and applying them in ways that they'd never expected. Once the seed was planted, there wasn't any stopping it. $36 billion in bonuses this year. This kind of cult of more, 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 grow, grow, grow. The economy is melting. The Bush administration is leaving. Obama gets a real glimpse of the future disasters coming. There's real panic in the marketplace. You may have just made the decision that destroyed the world. These banks transfer risk across the Atlantic outside the purview of American regulators. They turn into a Frankenstein monster. Occupy everything! In an election year, Wall Street got away with bank robbery. Is the global financial system any safer? This crisis really never ended. Tonight, Part one, money, power, and Wall Street. Every day, tens of thousands of workers make their way to Wall Street. They work for banks, brokerages, hedge funds, insurance companies, and mortgage lenders. It is the largest single sector of the American economy, an industry that is almost double the size of America's manufacturing sector, a business with enormous power and global reach. It is the industry that led America and the world into its worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. The banks say they exist to create wealth, holding in trust our collective worth, promising to invest the trillions of dollars that stream in from businesses, pension funds, and savings accounts that belong to all of us. One morning in the fall of 2011, bankers arriving in Lower Manhattan were caught by surprise. The recession had destroyed $11 trillion of Americans' net worth. A recovery seemed far off. Occupy Wall Street wanted bankers held responsible. Most Americans think, and with good reason, that Wall Street got bailed out and Main Street didn't. We have very high unemployment. We lost eight and a half million jobs in the recession. Please join in. People's houses aren't worth what they paid for them. A lot of them don't have jobs. Their kids are graduating from college and are moving back in. This is what democracy looks like. Some protesters were calling for bankers to be prosecuted. It is uh, pretty clear, actually, that there was massive illegality going on. And if uh, somebody with subpoena power was intent on prosecuting that, uh, I don't think there's really much doubt that they would be quite successful in criminal prosecutions. In a matter of weeks, Occupy demonstrations spread to scores of cities across America and the world calling for radical changes in the banking system. 